Hey book lovers, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader and this is the second part of my July reading wrap up. And I talked before in previous videos how I felt like I've had a reading slowdown recently and I'm so happy to report that I think that's finally come to an end uh, because in the last two weeks of the month I read five books and most of a sixth book. Not that reading is a race, but as I talked about before, I was getting so frustrated about not reading as much as I wanted to. And of course, there'll never be enough time to read all the books that I want to, uh, but I, I wanted to step up my pace and read a bit more. So I had a good long weekend all to myself where I did nothing but read all weekend. And then I had several evenings like that too. Like I've avoided going to any events or going out um, much in the evenings. Plus I went on a long weekend away to the south of France uh, to stay at a friend's house where I spent some time just sitting in the shade and drinking rosé and reading lots and it was bliss and I really want to go back there. It was far too short. Plus things are getting more settled in my new flat uh, where my bookshelves are finally finished. Um, I hope to make a bookshelf tour um, at some point soon. And you know everything just feels more calm and settled when you have all of your books out up on the shelves and close to you. So I hope my reading pace keeps up. In my uh, last book haul video I talked about a reading revolution that I want to start in August where we do nothing but read all month and don't work and that's very real. I want that to happen. I mean that can happen, right? Don't robots basically serve all of our needs now? We don't need to work. Let's just read. <laughs> so the first book I read uh, was Kingdom Cons by Yuri Harara. He's a Mexican writer. And I'm sad to report that this book was a bit of a disappointment. It's a very short book. Um, it won't take you very much time to read. It follows an artist musician named Lobo who joins the court of a king in what feels like a medieval landscape but is really a contemporary drug cartel. So there's the gritty realism of drug warfare but it sort of feels like a mythic time. Lobo tries to navigate his way through this place and he strikes up alliances and he creates songs which either uh, flatter or amuse the king. It's about the way art can be compromised for the sake of power, but it didn't feel like that the novel went deep enough for me um, in the way that I think other novels, recent novels that have handled this subject like Julian Barnes' novel The Noise of Time and Madeleine Thien's novel Do Not Say We Have Nothing did. Plus the story devolves into a kind of romance which I feel like it didn't work that well. So I sort of liked the absurdity and strangeness of it all but overall felt a bit underwhelmed. Next I read Calm Toybin's new novel House of Names. This novel was so spectacular and so immersive. It's his retelling of the Greek myth of the warrior king Agamemnon. Uh, I always have trouble saying his name, Agamemnon, Agamemnon, Agamemnon. But the story is told from the perspectives of his wife Clemenestra and his son Orestes and his daughter Electra. He shows all the power shifts that happen in their house and the plots for vengeance and all the high drama of this story. There's some horrendous violence in it, but Toybin doesn't really linger on the details of that. It's more about the psychology of these characters locked in battle with each other and the feelings of loneliness that this engenders. He also presents the sexuality of Orestes in a really fascinating way uh, where it's very clear that he falls in love and has sex with a man, uh, but they're not allowed to be together. In this society, it's customary for men, uh, especially powerful men, to slip away every once in a while and have sex with one of the guards, uh, but you're not allowed to have like a long-term love affair, as if they were married or husbands. I just thought it was a really beautifully written and powerful novel. I mean, have you read any of Toybin's novels? Do you, you have a favorite? I really love his books. I mean, I wasn't hugely impressed by The Testament of Mary. That just sort of drifted past me, but so many of his other novels novels like The the Master um, I just think is a brilliant book. It's one of my most favorite books ever. And so House of Names brought me fully back on the toy bin bandwagon. Evening Primrose by Copano Matlua. This is by a South African writer and interestingly in her native country the title of the novel was Period Pain. And once you get into the story it's easy to see why this novel would be called that because when the narrator first gets her period 
it causes her a lot of trouble. She has a condition where she bleeds excessively when she gets her period, so this causes a lot of problems and uh, results in a lot of shame. The story is told in a series of journal entries after she graduates from medical school, so you follow her journey as she struggles working in the very underfed uh, public health care system, but also the struggles with xenophobia in the country, in this uh, post-apartheid country, where she has a good friend from Zimbabwe uh, who receives a lot of prejudice, and it also explores her conflicted feelings about her Christian beliefs. Because it's written in these journal entries, you really feel the immediacy of her pain and suffering, but you also get some sections of humour where it's written in a more kind of gossipy type way. It's a really strong and thoughtful novel. Happy by Nicola Barker, and this novel is just wild. It's sort of billed as a post-post-apocalyptic novel, and that's because it takes place in this future time where uh, after you learn in the beginning that all these disasters have occurred, and rather than show the struggles of people trying to survive in the aftermath of all these disasters, it shows a future time where everyone, all the, the general population is just plugged into this stream, which gives them this steady sense of contentment and happiness. It's sort of a collective consciousness where everyone can maintain a level of consistent harmony uh, because all their needs are met. It's like in the ideals of Buddhism where all desires are eliminated and as a result all suffering is eliminated as well. So everyone is apparently happy but of course it's not perfect because the narrator who's called Mira A discovers a glitch in her stream where the A in uh, the word happy is parenthesized. She creates a narrative to find out why this is, and along the way she finds herself caught between a revolution against the system and being modified by the powers that be uh, to fit her back into the system. So as a result, and because of this conflict, the narrative actually breaks down, and you see this happening on the page where the text goes sort of crazy, where it turns different colors and it inflates. So about halfway through, I'll show you the, the text uh, goes a bit wild where all these symbols are introduced and sometimes you get these charts with like text overwritten and embedded inside of it. And she shows the actual code on the page where Mira A is trying to actually write in the text. So this is very much a novel where you just go along with the crazy ride or you set it aside because you prefer traditional narratives. But I found it a really striking meditation on our modern life, like how many of us who participate in social media are continuously creating this narrative stream in our feeds, where we self-consciously or not monitor each other and ourselves. I really like novels that give a different perspective on identity and how we articulate our identity, so I found this novel a lot of fun. And finally I read the novel Mirror Shoulder Signal by Dorothy Norris. This is a novel that was translated from the Dutch, and it was shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize earlier this year. And on the surface it's a fairly simple story. It's about a woman named Sonia living in modern-day Copenhagen and she's trying to learn how to drive. She's a woman in her late 40s, I think, and uh, it starts off as quite like a comic novel, but then it gradually becomes more thoughtful and introverted and shows some darker, deeper shades. She's someone who continuously thinks back to her childhood and she grew up in quite a rural area and then moved to Copenhagen uh, when she was a young adult. And she thinks about how she's lost that sense of that childhood self and her connection with all the people that she grew up with. But then she feels like she can't really progress into the future. She keeps thinking back to this time when she went to see a psychic or a fortune teller and because of the prediction that that fortune teller gives, she feels like she can't really progress in her life. I don't really understand why, but she kept thinking back to this incident. And I had a slight issue with the novel where um, this is a very personal thing, but she gets stressed a lot, um, so she goes to see a massage therapist regularly called Ellen. And this massage therapist is a very new agey type where she joins her on this funny expedition um, where they try to go up a mountain and commune with nature, which doesn't really work at all and it's uh, just quite a funny scene. Uh, but I, I have a slight problem with it uh, because um, it seems like a stereotypical 
stereotypical thing where massage therapists are always presented as these like new agey wishy-washy type people and uh, I know uh, a lot of them are but um, I work as a massage therapist too sometimes and uh, I really don't have that sense of like it's all connected with spirituality but like I say I know a lot of massage therapists are like that it just seems to be a tendency where it's a profession that just seems drawn to these more like new agey type ideas so it's not unrealistic but I just had a slight issue with it but overall I found the novel quite moving um, as it gets a lot more thoughtful as it goes along and you start to really feel Sonia's sense of inner crisis I mean she she works as a translator uh, where she translates this very like gory Scandinavian crime fiction and the the way the novel is written seems like a foil to that where not a lot happens but it's just uh, deeply thoughtful and reflective about our state in the world um, particularly people who have moved from a rural area to a more urban area so I thought it was a really intriguing novel but I think it's going to be one of those books that doesn't really stick with me for a long time and finally I'm almost finished uh, reading this novel My Absolute Darling but I'll um, wait to talk about that till later it's a really um, strange and powerful novel so so that's what I've been reading. Before I go, I want to uh, talk about because I made a video about um, my favorite books of the year so far and I ran a competition where uh, I said I would send one of those novels to somebody if you tell me what your favorite book of the year is. So I quite randomly picked one of the comments for that um, from Jim Matulski from Boston who uh, recommended that I read Andre Osman's novel Enigma Variations and he described it in a really fascinating way in the comment and this is a novel that I've been wanting to get to because I really enjoyed Andre Osman's novel Call Me By Your Name uh, which is actually being made into a film or it has been made to a film and it's uh, gonna come out soon and I've been really wanting to read more of his fiction and Jim if you get in touch with me and let me know your address I'll send you a surprise pick from uh, one of my 10 favorite books of the year so far. So let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these novels and what you think of them or if you're interested in reading them and uh, let me know what you've been reading lately. I'll speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching and happy reading everyone. Let's keep the revolution going. Power to the people!